Buddhism as practice was just beginning to become something of an event here in Britain. It was a place where we could go to find the texts we needed for our Dharma practice and Dharma studies. So it's always been both of those things. A resource for the out those outside Buddhism wishing to appreciate this jewel of human culture and in a way a resource for those who want to make Buddhism their personal practice. So it means that this exhibition is not a mere collection of antiquities, of oriental curios, however fascinating for the scholar or the antiquarian they might be. At its heart there is the evidence of a living tradition of philosophy and spiritual practice. The library itself, its collections bear testimony to the work of scholars over the last two centuries, because it's over the last two centuries that Western academics and scholars have begun to seriously investigate Buddhism. And their work is, the fruits of their labor are present here. But in the last five decades or so, Buddhism as a living practice has also begun to take root in the, in the West, stimulated to a certain extent by immigrant communities, by immigrant scholars, but also by indigenous converts to, to Buddhism. So this exhibition is particularly timely in that it brings these two streams, the scholarly and the practice sides to, together. And what is more, at this time when the world is in so many ways fractured, by hosting this exhibition on Buddhism, we have some example of the great genius of human flowering. Because Buddhism, like Christianity, like Islam, like Judaism, gave birth to one of the great world civilizations. And that's all evidenced in our exhibition. At the heart of Buddhism is the text, and so it's necessary and very appropriate that the text is really at the core of this exhibition. The text, the repository of the Buddha's teachings, the text, the repository of guidance for men and women through the centuries. But how ironic that is, Buddha himself never wrote a word. Yet Buddhism is preeminently a textual tradition. Buddha inspired an enormous literature, uh, one which is staggering in its detail, in its immensity, in its richness. The Buddha's word itself, those discourses which we think are actually representing the Buddha's teachings, if we enumerated them, in the Tibetan recension alone, there are 108 volumes of Buddha, Buddha word. Not bad for a person who never wrote a single thing, one might, one might think. So here in this exhibition, we have an eloquent testimony to Buddha's wise words. His wise words are, how are we to live a truly moral life? How are we to find peace within ourselves and access the wisdom that is in a way present within all, all of us, within in fact all sentient beings. In short, here is the Dharma, the second of the three jewels of Buddhism. The Buddha, the teacher, the Dharma, the path he set forth, and the Sangha, the community of women and men who have preserved the Dharma. All, that, all those three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, you will see in this exhibition. So, for those of us who are involved personally in Buddhism, there is something to be proud of in this exhibition, something to delight in. But I think it is of equal importance for those from other faiths and those of not, because they will find also much to marvel at, much to ponder upon, much to be inspired by much to help them to find the treasures within perhaps their own background and their own tradition. Because Buddhism is finally one of the great flowerings of, as I said, of human genius. 
of that innate wisdom which rests within the hearts of all men and women, however far we sometimes stray from it. So it's a great joy to anticipate the wonder and magic that people feel when they come to this exhibition. So I thank the trustees of the library, I thank the officers, the workers and everybody who's made this wonderful exhibition possible. And I conclude by saying, surely it's, it's timely that we have in this great cultural space some evidence of a, a way of living, a way of experiencing the world, a way of regarding each other, which reflects those most sublime human values of love, of kindness, of patience, of wisdom, of a sense of interconnectedness, of a sense of indebtedness to the past, but a recognition of the necessity of change and growth. All these are the hallmarks of Buddhism, and you'll find them here in this exhibition. And so if this makes some contribution to healing the fractures in our society, healing the fractures in our own personal lives, it will be a job well worth doing. So please enjoy the exhibition. Thank you.